everybody. Welcome back to a very special podcast. This is the podcast in which we talk about all of your favorite TV series from yesteryear. Woo! And I discuss them over a glass of wine. I'm, yes, I'm Patrick M. Dunn. Uh, perhaps you know me from the previous 104 episodes. And I'm joined here, as always, by accomplished author Catherine Halstead. Good yeah. morning, everybody. Yes, welcome back. Uh, we It's been like a week or two since we've last recorded. We took a, a quick break, but we are back. Uh, we're back in the 2K018 to bring you all new apps on the podcast, and we're excited. We're excited about tonight's episode, I think. Uh, we're super excited. We've been getting begged for the new episode. Yeah, by one person. <laughs> like, I have messages. <laughs> no, by several people. Oh, well, I just got one. I don't know. But, uh, apparently, you're more popular than I. Um, that's because I'm friendly, bitch. Well, I'm not. That's why. <laughs> I, uh, I live in my little... <laughs> exactly. Unabomber-style shack in the woods <laughs> and, um, avoid all contact with humanity. But I did get one message the other day about when we are doing this, and I said, I don't know yet, because I hadn't... At the time, I hadn't even watched, uh, the episode we're doing tonight. Uh, it's not really an episode, it's a movie. We're doing a made-for-TV movie, uh, from 1990. We're going way back. We're going back... Yes. 18 years? Yeah, 18 years. Holy crap. No, 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 it's not 18 years, 20, 28 years, 28 years. What the fuck am I talking about? <laughs> what the fuck am I talking about? <laughs> I was like, wait, 18 was long enough. Now I'm like, yeah, wait a minute. I don't know. I, apparently, God world. apparently I still think it's fucking 2008. <laughs> 2008 when things were great. Yes. Um, and <laughs> all right. So, yeah. All right. So this definitely does seem like it's 28 years old. Uh, it is a product of its time. Yes. So uh, shall you announce the official title? Because it is, it's a, it's a long title. Okay. The official title. Of what we watched is Archie to Riverdale and back again. But it is also known as Archie Return to Riverdale and Archie's Weekend Reunion and several other titles throughout the world. What? I did not know this. Yes, I, I did my research, bitch. I, I would have liked Archie's like Reunion Weekend. That's like shorter and easier to stay. Instead of Archie to Riverdale and back. Which I no, and back again. Is it and back again? Yeah. And back again. I don't know. It's just, it's too, too wordy. I think that might have scared a lot of people off, I think. You have to go into this knowing Archie, which I don't think should be that hard because everybody freaking knows like the basics of Archie. And th there really is not much to know about Archie. Uh, the comics don't really, they don't really get in depth, especially like the really older issues. I think today. Yeah. The newer ones are a little more, uh character driven but the old ones just you got you one comic had like five or six different stories in there yeah you get the comic and then you would read these different stories and it's not like they would pick up unless they were meant to be like a longer thing to get you to buy more comics yeah it wasn't like uh like the marvel cinematic universe where it was just this long ass story it just we just saw a little short little segments of time it, it was like a really short simpsons episode is is i guess how to describe yeah. it Everything kind of goes back to normal at the end of the at the end of the uh, story at the end of the tale. Yes, they were they were meant but. to be like easily read, marketed towards kids. Yeah, I I am. I always like struggle. I'm like, what is the demographic for Archie? Because <laughs> I remember like when I was like really really young, I I think I liked the colors mm -hmm. of it and I liked mm -hmm. some of the stories, but then it was very sh very short lived. Like I wasn't like wildly in like tuned into this for years and years and years and then i remember being like a teenager and even in my 20s and i go to the, the grocery store and i'd still see the archie digest issues still in like the checkout line and i was like who the fuck are buying these you know what there definitely were times every once in a while i would pick up an archie digest you just want to like dive into that world make sure archie hasn't picked between betty and veronica yet yeah, well, I mean, it's not. It's never going to happen. He's never going to pick. He's going to be forever like 16. And Hashtag Team Veronica. We're, we're going to like jump ahead into the future a little bit. So today in real life, uh, they, the CW adapted very poorly, I will say. They very poorly adapted the Archie universe uh, with a, a teen drama, Riverdale. I'm sure you've heard of it. I'm sure if you're listening to this, uh, you're, you're wildly familiar with it. We love Riverdale. Cat is obsessed. Cat can't stop watching, even though Cat oh, really? knows she should be watching because it's so ridiculous. Like, I sit here watching it and I go, what is this hot mess? But why can't I turn it off? I finally checked out. I was like, this this show is not good for my health. Okay. <laughs> this is the thing that gets me about Riverdale. Like, you've got freaking KJ Appa as Archie Andrews and he is gorgeous. He's got like the nice boy next door charm and he's cute and he's buff 
And all the girls are going gaga over freaking Jughead. You can take him home. You can take him home to mom. I don't know. He'll probably have like a nice conversation with your parents. You can bring home Archie Andrews. You cannot bring home fucking Archie Andrews. You gotta leave fucking Archie Andrews at the fucking doorstep. You do not bring him in your house. Oh my god, you are the worst. <laughs> I am the worst. Welcome to a very special podcast where I am the worst person in the world. He really is. Can I can I just say the one character I like on actually there's two characters I like on No, you know what? There's three characters I like on Riverdale. One Shout out to Veronica Lodge, uh, Team Veronica. Uh, I will agree with you on that. She's the savior of the show. Yes, Veronica is freaking amazing. The actress who plays her is just phenomenal. Yes, and she's even great in this uh, Riverdale movie that we're going to be doing tonight, too. Like, she was like the only character I liked. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely, I have definitely always been more of a Veronica fan than a Betty fan. Yeah, Betty sucks. Betty sucks everywhere she goes. Yeah, Betty, like, Betty is the absolute worst on Riverdale. Like, I can't fucking stand her. But you know what? They su- they succeeded with her mom, though. My second favorite character on Riverdale, Alice Cooper, uh, played by Shelly from Twin Peaks. We're not going to even try to say her real name. Yes. Uh, Alice Cooper it. is freaking <laughs> amazing. Like, at first I was like, who is, what is with this bitch? But I freaking love her. I love her. They should just do a spinoff of just Alice Cooper sitting around her computer, drinking wine and just like slandering people on the internet, like on like the Riverdale version of Facebook and shit. I would watch, it should be like a talk show, like a nightly talk show. Okay. So who's your third favorite? Uh, My third favorite character on Riverdale is uh, Mark Consuelos, uh, Hiram Lodge. Ooga. Yes. (laughs) Shout out to fucking Hiram Lodge. Uh, the show just needs a a good fucking villain. Yeah, but yeah. not the uh, who was like the the Blossom dad from last season. He kind of sucked as a villain. Like I have no real like connection to the Blossoms because they were never in the Archies that I would read. So or like if they were, they were just like there. I honestly like I thought like Loki. I thought like they were just a character they made up for the series. But no, uh, it's a part of part of the um. Part of the world, I guess. Yes. Yeah, that family sucks. Uh, Cherry Blossom's okay, but I don't know. I, I, I feel like it's um, it's like too much of a cliche to like her. So I'm going with Hiram. I'm going with Hiram. I'm going with Veronica. And I'm going with Alice Cooper. That is the trifecta of the series. And I wish you could like download like an ad blocker-like thing where you can just block everyone else in the show and just only follow them around. I mean, you did pick like three of the best, like the absolute best characters on that show. Yeah, I, I think I did too. And um. That that's my Riverdale minute. Unless you have anything to add, I'm just gonna say Riverdale has the hottest TV dads. Oh yeah, uh, look, we got we got the 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 dreamiest dad of all time, uh, Luke Perry. Hey guys, I'm Luke Perry. Uh, he plays Archie's dad. He's a little more older looking now, a little more mature. He's got some like uh, wrinklier lines on his forehead, saggy eyes. <laughs> okay, I watched The Fifth Element for the first time the other night. Yeah, tell me about the this. boy. Tell me about this. And I was like, oh, Luke Perry's in this, and he's like. Who's Luke Perry? And I'm like, he, he was on Beverly Hills 90210 and he's on Riverdale. He's like, oh. And it's just like this weird mind trip because Luke was so young when this movie was made. So he looks so young. He's not all wrinkled. I wouldn't say Luke was and, young when he had this made. He was younger well, <laughs> because he was probably like 42. Okay, yeah. He was more like, he was closer <laughs> to our age. Just, what, what was he? He was like our age, basically. He was like 27, 28, 29 ish, like the first season of 90210. So. so by the time he did the fifth element, he was like our age. Luke Perry. Could have dropped his kids off at West Beverly High School, like when he was on Nano Twin O. And like you know what? He probably did. And they were like, Hey, uh, hey, can you come yeah. here for a minute and do do a little like screen test with the kids? I don't know, I feel like he could be on the show. He's like, Oh, what are you talking about? What are you talking about, guys? Just here dropping off my teenage son, Luke Jr. And they're like, No, we want you to be on the show. He's like, Oh, you want to play like a, a friend of Jim's? No, 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 we want you to be Brenda's boyfriend. Who's Brenda? Like one of Cindy's uh, gal pals? No, no, no. She's one of the students. And he's like, oh. And he has like a little like twinkle in his eye. He's like, oh, I'm going to play a high schooler. Ooh, okay. That's the story of how Luke Perry was casted on Nano 210. Because he, he dropped his uh, his son off at a fictional high school in the, in the real world. <laughs> yes, I'm totally sure that's how it went. You heard it here first. Hot scoop. Hot scoop. All right. Um, to Riverdale and back again. Uh, this this episode... This episode, this this made for TV movie, uh, it premiered on Sunday, May 6, 1990. This is a hot night of television. Do you want to know what was going on in the world of network television? Oh, I'm dying to know what else was on. I mean, I totally know what I was watching, but I want to know what else was on. 
All right. Shall we kick things off with the alphabet, ABC? Ooga. Yes, let's hit it. All right. Uh, things start off with uh, Sunday night at 7 p.m. Yes, Sunday night does like the weird 7 p.m. slot. Do you have any guesses of what might have been on this evening? Not at all. Oh, oh, wait. Hold on. America's Funniest Home Videos. No, it's coming up, though. Uh, uh, Sunday night gives us the glorious 7 p.m. slot, and kicking off the night is a hearty rerun of Life Goes On. Okay, okay. Yes, television's first drama series built around a mentally challenged character, Life Goes On, chronicles the experiences of the Thatcher family, particularly Corky, who has Down Syndrome. Uh, although he is 18, Corky is now just being uh, mainstreamed to high school after extensive time in special education classes, which means he's a classmate of his 14-year-old sister, Becca, played by uh, Kelly Martin. Shout out to Kelly Martin. We love you on ER. We love you, Kelly Martin. Yeah, come back to us. Come back to us wherever you are. Tweet us at Very Podcast. She's uh, producing Hello. Hallmark movies. Shout out to Hallmark movies. <laughs> um, you, uh, The last time we talked about Life Goes On, you revealed that you never really watched this show. And I got the Chads mixed up. We were talking about one of the Chads, and I got them mixed up. Yeah. Uh, Chad Lowe? Was Chad Lowe was in this, right? Yeah, I think so. I think that's the one. And I thought it was the other Chad. Chad Michael McMurray? No, there was another Chad. Hanging Chad? I don't know. How many Chads are there? Like, there was one on um, My Two Dads. I thought it was that guy, but I didn't realize. Oh, yeah. Well, it was until like, okay, you want to know how I figured out that I got the Chads mixed up? How's I that? was watching an episode of ER and Chad Lowe was odd as an intern for Carter. The season before Carter gets Kelly Martin as an intern. Oh, that would have been wild if they were like together. But I don't know. Chad Lowe had to bail. <laughs> Chad Lowe only lasted like... A few season, like a few episodes in the first in that season, and then he shows up later. Spoiler alert: when uh, Carter's about to leave the show. Uh, yes. Uh, side note: uh, check out our spinoff podcast coming soon. Set the tone in the air podcast. Uh, er just dropped out on Hulu, so we're all geared up. We're geared up and ready to go. Okay, what well, was on at eight p.m.? All right, uh, you teased it earlier. We are going to spend thirty minutes with Bob Saget narrating videos of people getting hit in the nuts by things. Yes, I'm talking about the one and only America's Funniest Home Videos. Basically, life before YouTube. Yes, and that show is still on the air now, though. Yeah, I, I mean, has it been continuously on, or does it like go off and on throughout the years? Um, I think it's actually been continually on. Okay, uh, low key, I have not watched the show since. Uh, maybe I watched like. A version in the late 90s when, like, Daisy Fuentes or something was on it. And that was the last time I've seen it. Like, I think she was on the America's Funniest People um, with Dave Coulier. Yeah. I'm, oh, I got to tell you a funny story. I fucking, I went to a comedy club the other night here in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. You know when you go to, like, a, like an actual okay. comedy club and they have, like, the pictures of all the people who've been there on the walls, like the headshots? Yeah. There was a picture of one guy. I just remember seeing this one guy, and they have, like, all his, like, credits, his, like, comedy credits around. And one of the comedy credits said, America's Funniest People. <laughs> like, the show that was on for, like, eight weeks in 1991 or something like that. Like, this, the low-key spinoff. I think it actually lasted a couple seasons. Really? Yeah. Let's, let me ask Google. Yeah, I think you're right. I think we've talked about it before on the podcast. It was on from... It had 89 episodes. Whoa. From... May 13th, 1990 to August 28th, 1994. Wow, I didn't realize it was on that long. Uh, I know it has the infamous uh, Jackalope character that was... Let's like, not talk about that. <laughs> yes, We're not going to talk about that. I forget which episode of the podcast it is. It's one of our, um, like, the, the first 20, if you go back. It's a wine bag. Oh, it's a wine bags. Okay. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm, you're going to insert the audio right here. There, There's an audio clip of Cat trying to convince me that a jackalope was a real animal and i was like no it's a made-up creature and we did like a live google research of it and we found out that it was just it's a made-up like it's like a mythological creature like of american folklore and cats here trying to convince me that they're real and they're like running around minnesota or something like that taxidermy <laughs> taxidermists do make them I think like the next day after that, I went to a restaurant and there was a jackalope head on the restaurant. <laughs> Are you ready for 8.30? Hit me with it. All right. I've never heard of this. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of this. An all new episode of Busted Pilot. Do you know what? what? I've never heard of this. <laughs> Busted Pilot. All right. I did some internet research. I cannot find any information about this. There's nothing on IMDb, nothing on Wikipedia, nothing anywhere. That is scary. I hate when we can't find, like, anything about something that, like, sketches me out. Like, conspiracy corner. 
<laughs> exactly. I don't know. So who knows if this is real or not? Maybe this is like scheduled to be on, and then they changed their mind and just did like an hour of America's Funny Some Videos instead. Who knows? Like maybe I don't know. This is so weird. All right. Are you ready for ABC 9 p.m.? Yes. Hit me with it. Hit me with it. All right. Sunday night, 9 p.m. That only means one thing. The ABC Sunday night movie. And are you ready for tonight's tale? What is it? What is it? What is it? All right. It's a movie called Burning Bridges. Uh. And I want to take a guess who might be in it. Marky Post? No. Close, though. Meredith Baxter of Family Ties fame. I don't know why I said close. Why Why is Meredith Baxter and Marky Post close? <laughs> because they're both blonde women from NBC <laughs> sitcoms in the 80s. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, with tall hair, I think. And did Meredith Baxter have tall hair on Family Ties? I can't honestly remember. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't think they really either had tall hair. They both had just really bad 80s haircuts. I just assume every lady that was on a TV show in the 80s had tall hair. Yeah. Are you ready for the plot of uh, Burned Bridges? Yes, tell me. Tell me, tell me, tell me, please. A married woman's refusal to end her love affair with a doctor tears her family apart and drives her to a mental breakdown. Ooga. So, bitch refuses to end an affair and she, like, can't handle the pressure anymore? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, because she doesn't want to, she doesn't want to burn bridges. <laughs> She wants to keep things going with her with her husband and with her um the doctor she's fucking on the side. Man, that must have been some good dick. Uh it probably well, he's a fucking doctor. He's probably buying her nice shit, probably bought her a fucking Rolls Royce or something. Maybe. And then I don't know, maybe her hus maybe her husband's a good guy too. Like it doesn't we don't know what he does for a living. Maybe he's like maybe he's in Hollywood or something. He's got a lot of certain lifestyle. A lot of film credits, who knows. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. She doesn't want to burn fucking those bridges, so maybe they should have like organized a throuple, like a throuple situation, and just said like, "Hey, you know what?" Yeah, like okay, in 1990, do you think that would have flown? Like, let's be a threesome. Oh, uh, I mean, they they're low key about it. It might work. Maybe yeah. You know, they could just be like, "Hey, uh, this doctor is just uh, my husband's brother. He's just here. Just you know, he had a little ran into a little uh, hardship back at home and uh, where he came from, and he just needs he needs someone to crash." Oh, that's true. It's like uh. It's like that season of Sybil where uh, Sybil lets her first ex-husband move in for a little while. God, that would be awkward. <laughs> and some, you know what? Sometimes even like both of her ex-husbands are there. So who knows? Meredith Baxter, your character in this movie should watch the mid-90s sitcom Sybil and try to um, finagle that into existence. All right. Are you ready for the Tiffany Network? Are you ready for CBS? Yes. Give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me. All right. You got to know it was on at 7 p.m. You should know this without even me having to say it. Murder she wrote at 7 p.m no girl 60 minutes 60 why do i get this wrong every fucking time <laughs> what is wrong with me what is wrong with me you got a uh, kj appa on your mind you're just thinking of his long penis swaying underneath his like gym shorts i do i uh... we got a little cat pause right there because she was thinking about it you yeah you have totally seen that gif on tumblr right oh yeah sorry my mind went somewhere else yeah, she went to that fucking KJ Appa Anaconda cock. Anyway, uh, CBS 60 Minutes, uh, the popular news magazine series, famously hosted by Mike Wallace for a million years, and now is the current home of, like, Oprah? Oprah's on it now? And fucking Anderson Cooper? Is she? Is that what o- Oprah's doing? I don't know. Yeah, she's like a part-time correspondent. I, I don't know. Um, I don't know. All I know is I had to ask people if they would vote for Oprah or Donald Trump at work, and it was just really weird. Uh, wh- what is your hot take on Oprah running for president? I think it's a fun topic of discussion, but I don't feel like that's the sort of president we need in America. I think it's just like a fun Twitter topic. I don't think Oprah will really fucking run for president. And I don't know. I think we need to get back to like not having entertainers. Yeah, exactly. Stand behind the Oval Office. Because it's turned into a fucking The Simpsons movie where Arnold Schwarzenegger is the goddamn president. Like, I just like don't want to sit there at work and be like, oh my God, is this really the question I have to ask? Like between a talk show host and a reality star. Oh my God, what is my life? My life is a hot mess. Okay, so what was on after 60 Minutes? All right. Uh, you guessed it. Uh, Sunday night, 8 p.m. Where are you? Murder, she wrote. We're going to uh, Cabot Cove, starring the wonderful Angela Lansbury as uh, I found out her middle name, Jessica Beatrice Fletcher. Yes, Jessica Beatrice. <laughs> anyway, um, I found the plot of tonight's episode. It's an all new episode. The episode's called The Szechuan Dragon. Hold on. Does Jessica go to a Chinese restaurant and somebody ends up dead? Um, No. <laughs> this... 
I don't know. I, I was reading the description of this this episode. It, it seemed like a potential spinoff alert to me. Okay. So I guess Jessica has to go to England to like hang out with the queen or something. So she invites her nephew and his wife to Cabot Cove to house sit while she's away. Mm -hmm. And while Jessica is away, her nephew and his wife discover the dead body of a peg-legged murder victim on the living room floor of Jessica's home. And now, while Jessica's out of town, they have to solve the Hold up. Hold it up. Hold this bitch up. <laughs> this bitch leaves the fucking country. Yes. <laughs> and there's a murder in her house? I know. And, it's, and she's not there. And like she's like dragged her family into this to like solve the crime. So I don't know. I, like I felt like. I, I can't with this bitch. I can't. I can't. I found no details that this was supposed to be like a potential backdoor spinoff. But totally spinoff alert. Dude, this is why she has to get like random family members to house it because there's going to be a murder while she's gone. Uh, we'll have to we'll have to dig this episode up. Um, Murder She Wrote's currently not on like the streaming outlet, so we'll have to uh, we'll have to do some some strange channels and find this episode and I don't know find out who the killer was. I guess. Oh my god, what? And it's a peg leg. I I can't. I can't. All right, you ready for us, uh, CBS? What's on after this? All right, this is wild. 9 p.m. CBS is going to the movies. It's a movie night. Yeah, and tonight they are going cinematic. They're going for a cinematic release for the network broadcast premiere of 1987's The Untouchables. Uh, Brian De Palma's film based on Elliot Ness's uh, autobiography that also inspired an early 1960s television series. We're entering peak era Kevin Costner right here. Uh, who portrays Elliot Ness, uh, the man responsible for taking down Al Capone. Ooh. And... <sighs> Sorry, I'm thinking about that Earth Day scene between him and Meryl. <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. Uh, so Kevin Costner, 1987 to 1995, had like a sexy run of movies. <coughs> we got fucking, we got this movie. We got uh, No Way Out uh, with Sean Young and Gene Hackman. We got Field of Dreams, Dance with Wolves, uh, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, JFK, uh, that one with Laura Dern, uh, and then things started to like dwindle, dwindle when he did like Wyatt Earp, like one of the two films that were released the same year that was about Wyatt Earp. The other one was Tombstone. Yes. And then the biggest bomb of all time, maybe even bigger than the Black Cauldron. Dun dun dun. Waterworld. <laughs> uh, at the time, it was the most expensive film ever made. It had a tie-in video game, a toy line, a theme park attraction at Universal Studios. Uh, the budget was 172 million, and in the United States, it only grossed it, it only grossed 88 million. Oh damn! Yeah, I think it made more overseas, but weird stuff like that usually does. Um, I think that's why they had to keep that uh, theme park attraction going for so many years to make to fucking make up for that loss. Yeah, because all the tourists were down with the water world, while the Americans were like, "Bitch, no." All right, we got two more networks that we need to get through. So let's. Uh, you ready to uh, just blast through Fox real quick? Hurry, hurry! <laughs> all right. 7 p.m., Fox's uh, version of The Outsiders. Okay. Based on the movie The Outsiders. This was a, um, a drama series that aired from March to July 1990 on Fox. Uh, we've talked about it before. David Arquette's in it, Billy Bob Thornton, and um, yeah, it didn't do too hot. Okay. 8 p.m., America's Most Wanted was on. Uh, 8.30, a rerun of The Simpsons. Uh, tonight was the episode called Call of the Simpsons. Do you know this one? Which what, What's that one about? All right, this is a fun season one episode. It's a camping misadventure for The Simpsons. First, they get lost in the woods. They lose all their camping equipment. Uh, then Homer gets mistaken for like a Bigfoot-type creature after like falling into a mud hole. <gasps> oh, okay. Yeah, so a uh, fun season one episode. And uh, 9 p.m., what do you think's on at 9 p.m., Fall on the Simpsons, Sunday night? Married with children. Yes. And uh, th th are you ready for tonight's episode? This is a good one. I've seen this one. Okay. All right. After being plagued by nightmares of feet, a beautiful woman asks Al to judge a beauty contest at um, the shoe store. But it's like a shoe pageant. Like, it's like a foot pageant. So, like, he has to, like, now look at everyone's feet. Yes. It's like <laughs> for people with foot with feet fetishes yes and he has to host it and then uh the side plot is kelly tricks marcy and bud into thinking they slept with each other which is i don't know kind of weird <laughs> i remember that super weird <laughs> when you when you look back on it yes all right nine thirty. nbc you have any ideas no idea uh a show called open house we've talked about it very briefly this was a uh, short-lived sitcom about employees of a california real estate company okay and ellen degeneres was in the show 
And then at 10 p.m., yes, Fox had a 10 p.m. slot. Um, it was a spinoff to 21 Jump Street called um, Booker, and it focused on Richard Grieco's character. Okay, interesting. Yeah, and uh, hold on. NBC, the final, uh, the final slot for the evening. The Wonderful World of Disney at 7 p.m. Do you want to know what was on tonight? Yes, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. All right, we might have to talk about this for a hot minute. <laughs> the Muppets at Disney World. What? We have to find this. This is a television special starring Jim Henson's Muppets at Walt Disney. I think it tied in with their um their ride. Not their ride. It's not a ride. That little like movie thing. It's one of those like experiences. Yeah. This turned out to be the last Muppet special that Henson worked on. He died 10 days later. 10 days after this aired, he died. Oh, shit. Do you want to hear the plot of uh, the Muppets at Walt Disney World? Yeah, give it to me. The Muppets are visiting Kermit's family for their annual reunion where they meet up with Kermit's aunts and uncles. Uh, they then learn that the swamp that they that Kermit's family lives in is right next to Disney World. They sneak in, and they are pursued by a security guard played by Charles Grodin. Oh my God! And Raven Simone is in this too. She has a um, she has a cameo, and she sings a song. I guess she sings Rainbow Connection or something like that. Oh my gosh! And uh, this leads into the main event tonight's main event at 9 p.m. to Riverdale. And back again. Yay, finally. And are you ready to go to Riverdale? I am ready to go to the 1990s version of Riverdale, which is total, like, backlot glory. Do we know where it was filmed? Did you find out this info? I believe it was the same. It's the same backlot that you see in um, little, that movie you like, the kids cursing horror movie thing. It's not Little Monsters. Monster Squad? What? What's it called? Monster Squad? Yes, Monster Squad that all right so it's filmed on the same yeah you know what i can kind of see which is like the same back lot they just used for um a christmas story the musical oh stars hollow and bluebell and all that stuff yeah this this lot is really small so like riverdale has been shrunk down we don't really see much of riverdale we just kind of see the outside of uh yeah, you don't see pop's chocolate shop uh we get like veronica lodge's neighborhood and like outside of the school maybe and, and you like get outside of like archie's house yeah we get like a little um like a shot of his picket fence mm -hmm. <laughs> that's that that's riverdale that's the the wild world of riverdale uh i think i think before we begin i think we need to do like a quick uh character roundup and like just okay. kind of like talk about like what they've been doing the last 15 years because they've they've graduated high school yes they graduated high school it's 1990 so they graduated um 15 years earlier so 1975 yeah that's what i um about 75 76 and um we're led to believe they haven't seen each other since then that's the impression that i've gotten yeah like they all like basically went their separate ways except for like reggie and archie who both stayed in riverdale yeah but it's it still seemed like even though they both stayed in Riverdale, it seemed like they never ran into each other. Like they don't hang out together. They like they drifted apart. Not that Reggie and Archie were ever really that close. I mean, they were in a band together. They, they, yeah, see, Reggie's like tertiary friend who like you bring him in when you need that fifth person. Yeah, they, they needed like um they needed like someone to play like a rhythm guitar or something, and he was the only yeah. he was the only kid in town who played rhythm guitar. Yeah, like they dragged him in, and then because like even on Riverdale, you don't have um Reggie like as part of the group. Yeah, I mean. In in Riverdale, the, the series, he's more of like Betty's pal. Is he Betty? Like, I would say he's more Veronica's. I don't know. I, it, I really, you know what? I bailed second season, so I, I can't really say. But but it feels like in like the first episode, he was like chumming up with Betty a lot. Yeah. Because Veronica just moved into town. But I, I could be wrong. It's it's been like a while Maybe. since I watched the fucking stupid show. Um. Sorry, fans. Sorry, fandom. That's true. <laughs> don't at me. So basically, <laughs> Archie and Reggie both stayed in Riverdale. Archie became a lawyer. Apparently, like a successful lawyer. Like he's like he's probably like the best lawyer in Riverdale. The only let's be real, the only lawyer in Riverdale. Yeah, let's be real. You know, he meets this woman Pam from a bigger law firm in the city. Yeah, she, uh, can we just say that she? This is the best example of settling for the lowest common denominator is Pam. Yeah. She's not even fun. There's nothing like a likable about her. Like I, I'm like Archie. Why are you with this girl? She's awful. It's like you know what he wanted Betty. But she left. Um, I, I guess he did. He want Veronica because it, it just seemed like he like had never had any interest in. No, he really wanted Veronica. It was Veronica. I don't know. We we got a lot of flashbacks here though, like that he was really trying to like sex up Betty though. Um. So, anyways, Archie's stayed in Riverdale. Like he went to Riverdale Community College. I guess I don't know. Did he do law school by mail or something? Because he's never left Riverdale. Uh, maybe there's maybe there's like a a little like an extension school maybe that they can go to. Maybe something. Yeah, he can take like night classes. He can work at. He probably worked at like the chocolate shop, like waited tables. Went to this like extension school. Got his uh got his law degree. 
open up a little shop, like a cute little shop in, in Riverdale. I don't, I don't know, helps people out with like real estate woes and stuff. Yeah. So basically, Archie's just like your good guy. And um, Reggie got into business bed with Mr. Lodge and he owns the building that Pop's shop is in because he's next door with a health club. Because what is more late 80s early 90s than a health club it just seemed like it was an excuse for him to get laid like he just got these like yeah S- suzanne summer uh olivia newton john like fitness wannabes they came in and they're little um they're like tight little spandexy type things mm-hmm. rocking the uh <laughs> i almost said the eucalyptus the, the elliptical and i don't know he probably just like would yeah go up behind them and just try to like woo them he he had like a sleaziness to him too kind of like a um there is like just always a layer of sleaziness to you reggie yeah kind of like a like larry from three's company john larroquette's character from night court he just yeah i don't know he, he just smelled like brute by faberge it seemed like old spice just trying to like land these chicks that's basically reggie well, he probably like very rarely gets laid maybe every now and then he yeah. finds like a poor sap that's probably like just driving through town and manages to like pick her up at the bar and then she wakes up the next morning and realizes she made a horrible mistake in bills like i gotta fucking get out of here that's um archie and reggie um oh i have i have one hot take on archie though okay this this one thing kind of actually it's more of like a hot take on pam archie's fiance okay why did they like shoehorn this weird character in there like they couldn't have find someone else from like archie comics to like pair him up with like they could have fucking got like Maybe not Josie, but maybe like another pussycat or even fucking like Sabrina Spellman. Just someone from like Archie lore that they could have just like paired him up with. That way we kind of could have got more from this fun world. And so we just get this weird made up character. I think it was probably because you don't want it to be someone that the viewers who know Archie would already have positive feelings about. Oh, like so. You know what I mean? You just want to like, oh, who cares? Like, who cares that Archie's dumping this fucking stupid character, Pam? She sucks. And you don't want to, like, turn, like, Josie into a raging bitch or something. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I guess, well, this this movie was a potential backdoor pilot for a series. So maybe, yeah. you know, they were like, all right, Pam will be in this movie. She'll leave. We'll never have to mention her again. The series will start and we'll never know that Archie was actually engaged to another woman. Yeah, exactly. I don't know, but I just thought it would have been like kind of cool if they brought in another like Archie character. And like, you know what? They didn't have to like make him engage. Like maybe they were just like casually fucking, you know? Well, again, it's 1990. I mean, people fucked in the 90s, cat. <laughs> Did they just start fucking today? <laughs> I'm not saying they didn't, but I'm saying it was a very different world of what you would get on TV. And I have one more hot take on Pam before before we move on to um like other characters. Okay. I feel bad for the actress who played Pam because it, it wasn't her fault she had to play a region bitch. That's true. She's auditioned. She probably auditioned for the role of Veronica or something. And they're like, oh, no, we went with somebody else. But we have another role for you. And she's like, oh, yeah, I'll take it. And she ran home and she's like telling our friends, oh, my God, I'm in the Archie movie. It's going to be on TV. It's going to be great. This is my big break. Yeah, this is my big break. And she's like the nag. She's the nag of the movie. Um, she's not even in it that much. She's probably in it for a total of like six minutes because as soon as they introduce her character, they immediately find a way for her to like be off screen the whole movie. Yeah, she's just gone. Yeah, because they're supposed to be moving to the big city. She's like, why don't you stay behind Archie? Go to your class reunion. I'll just go to the new place and like set up, set up, uh, like unpack the fine china, like hang up our artwork. <laughs> Which is, let's, okay, this, okay, let's talk about this. This is the woman who basically packs up Archie's house and sends everything to the Salvation Army. Yeah, she gets rid of all his shit. Yeah, like, like everything he owned, like his like baseball gloves, his like childhood paraphernalia. Just like everything, like everything she did not approve of for their like 90s yuppie lifestyle was gone. Yeah, cuz uh Archie is nostalgic. He's like the audience. You know, he he's just itching for this world of yesteryear Mm -hmm. he wants to save all his old comic books all his old baseball cards his old toys everything from his childhood like his like letterman jacket and she just threw all this shit into a box and just gave it away yeah it's in the 1990 version of ebay salvation army or goodwill or something yeah something like that and it kind of pissed off rg so that's like kind of like the first sign of oh you know something's wrong with this bitch Um, but you know when i'm stuck with her (laughs) which is totally an archie thing but yeah, he's like, oh, well, this is my Letterman. Like, I, there are certain things, like, yeah, you, you need to let go of, but, like, a Letterman jacket, 
Like, you earned that. Like, he worked hard for that. Archie is known for his Letterman jacket. Yeah. When they draw Archie, he's wearing his, his infamous red Letterman jacket with the letter R. Exactly. And this bitch is just fucking giving it away to, like, I don't know, some poor-ass teen who's going to buy it for, like, three bucks. Exactly. Who didn't earn those letters. Probably going to wear it as, like, a Halloween costume for, like, the throwback 50s party that was happening in, like, a few months. Okay, so who else do we have? We have um Jughead, who is now a psychiatrist. Let's get into Betty first. Talk about Betty. Because I, I have a big hot take on Jughead, and... I, and I feel like we should, um, okay. let's, let's get into Betty first. Uh, played by Lauren Hawley. Yes. Of Picket Fences fame. And uh, Mary Swanson of Dumb and Dumber fame. And married to Jim Carrey for a little while fame as well. Yes. I think this was like her big break. This is like one of the first few things that she done. Like Picket Fences wasn't even on yet. So yes, this is like, this was like her first major role. Yeah, this is uh, Lauren Hawley needs to pay rent and shit, um, has a car payment. And she lands a spot in a TV movie based on Archie Comics. Uh, she's got to wear, like, a platinum blonde wig. It's, like, obviously a fucking wig. Dude, that was a bad dye job. Dr- it, it was, like, a drugstore wig. <laughs> okay. Betty's life sucks. I kind of, like, feel bad for her. She really wants to be a writer, uh, but instead she, like, settles for, like, a teaching job. But I don't even think she's, like, a real teacher. She's, like, a substitute. I couldn't figure it out. No, she's, like, a real teacher. Like, she's a second grade teacher. Like, that's her class that she was leaving. Well, they made it, like, seem like that. Like, she lost her job. Like, she was done. No. <laughs> school. It's the end of the school year. Yeah, but, like, it seemed like she wasn't coming back, though. Like, she was, like, really sad and really depressed. Like, oh, I'm not going to be here next year kind of attitude. No, she's sad because the kids aren't coming back. She's going to get new kids in the fall. I guess so. I don't know. Because, like, there was, like, a weird scene, like, later on, like, where she was saying she was, like, looking for a job. and I don't know. Well, she's she has a boyfriend, Bob, who's, like, the male version of Pam. Mm-hmm. And... I don't know, was he dragging her somewhere? Because, like, it seemed like they were moving somewhere. I think that's why I got the impression that she was, like, sad, like, leaving leaving work. I think he, like Pam, wanted to move to the bigger city. Okay, like, I kind of got the impression that, like, maybe he didn't want her to work anymore, too. Like, she's like, you know what? I'm the man. Yeah, probably not. Because he's, like, because he's the man and um, he makes enough money that she doesn't have to work. And, you know, he can just knock her up. And then they'll have a bunch of babies and he can go find like little floozies on the side. Yeah, I, I mean, I f- low key, like, wouldn't that be the ideal thing for her so she can like focus on her writing instead of like having to like mm-hmm. correct papers and stuff all the time and like do read book reports and shit? Writing her weird little Easter egg hunt stories? Yeah, like, well, she she wrote like weird like kid kids books, I guess. Yeah. And then she kind of creeps into like the sexy romance novel territory by the end of the movie. We're jumping ahead a little bit. Well, yeah, because... Archie, like, kisses her, and she, like, goes, whoa. She has, like, a sexual awakening. Yeah. Uh, Low-key, I kind of gathered that she was still a virgin at this point. Ooh. I could see it. She was still pining for Archie. She still had, like, fantasies. She still thought about him late at night. Did she live with Bob? Do we know? Like, do they live together? I don't think so. But, like, uh, it's, again, 1990. I could see a guy still going, like, holding on for the virgin. Yeah, and there's a weird scene coming up with uh, Mr. Weatherby and uh, Miss Grundy where they... They kind of like shun Archie because they think he had a child out of wedlock. Mm-hmm. We'll we'll get to it in a minute. <laughs> Betty's kind of an enigma in this movie, and she doesn't really become like fully flushed out till like later on in the movie. But by then, it's like too late because it's like I already had my opinion formed that Betty sucks. Betty sucks. Hashtag Betty sucks. That's what I was gonna say. Shall we like liven it up a bit? Shall we get into um to our gal pal Veronica Lodge? Veronica, my favorite. Loved Veronica. Um, I'm a Veronica Stan. I just love her life. Like, her life since yeah. she graduated high school. She left Riverdale. She's just been chilling in Paris with daddy's money. She's been married and divorced four times. Mm-hmm. You know what? She's still not satisfied. She just wants a little Archie D inside her. Yes. She just wants that Archie dick. Yeah. I mean, I think for Veronica, she always wants something more down to earth. She's always been propelled into the more jet set lifestyle yeah and you get that with veronica in the comics you get that with her on riverdale in this movie so yeah like i know in um in riverdale the show um veronica moves back to riverdale from new york city and she's just kind of tired of that like club life and like hanging out with like celebs and shit Mm -hmm. now she just kind of wants to be a normal person and that's kind of veronica in this movie too she spent 15 years living abroad got married four times probably like goes to weird fashion shows um Mm -hmm. probably canoodles with like the Lindsay Lohan types of that era. Yeah, she's like, she's all over the tabloids kind of girl. And now she just wants to go back and just like land herself like a regular dude. She pulls out the old Riverdale phone book, checks out to see that Archie's still living there. And she just wants that fucking Ar- Archie D in her V. Mm-hmm. I don't blame her. Archie in this, Christopher Rich plays Archie? Yes, Christopher Rich. 1990 Archie is like a stud. Mm-hmm. 
He's got like the muscle dad bod. You know, he's not he's not like ripped, but he's like he's a little little chunky, but he's still got like he's still yeah. got the pecs and shit. We do get like a shirtless Archie scene. Yes, we get shirtless Archie. We get and... oh. you know what? Archie would be a catch. Like if I was on Bumble or Tinder and like I saw a guy like Archie in this movie, swipe right. I have a good son scenario for you. Oh shit. Fuck me. Welcome to the Good Son Scenario game. This is the game where um, KJ Appa and Christopher Rich, their versions of Archie. It's like a weird alternate universe where um, Archie, the two Archies collide. They're on the same plane for a rare moment. They're fighting near the edge of a cliff. They roll off the cliff. Cat just happens to be nearby. She's like having a picnic or something. I'm having a what? A picnic or something <laughs> by herself. You're just like chilling on the side of a cliff, like drawing a picture of the ocean or something. And you see the two Archies. You get a little hot and bothered by it. You're like, ooh, I'm excited and turned on by this. She's got her matching red hair. So I don't know, two gingers. Actually, three fake gingers. She runs over. She manages to grab both both Archies. They're both dangling from her arms, one on each arm. But she only has enough arm strength to pull one up. Is it going to be KJ Appa Archie or is it going to be Christopher Rich Archie? And the one you pick will be with you forever. <laughs> so you will forever get to be with Archies and you'll get to have like beautiful little um, Archie Andrew babies. Sorry, Christopher Rich. You're going down. Oh, spit take. Goodbye, Christopher Rich. Christopher Rich is going to fall into the ocean and be resurrected and spend out his days with Reba McIntyre. Exactly. All right. So you heard it here first. Hot scoop. Cat would let Christopher Rich die. And spend out her days with KJ Apple. This is the kind of stuff I'm going to get tweets about. In my good son scenario, I would pick Christopher Rich. Just going to throw it out there. I kind of figure. Christopher Rich is my jam. I'm here for the Christopher Rich version of Archie. I wouldn't even struggle. I would just I would just immediately use all of my energy and save Christopher Rich. Okay. You know Christopher Rich played Melissa Joan Hart's father on Melissa and Joey? No. I didn't know this. Yep. I knew that he did like six or seven seasons of Reba, but I didn't know about um, yeah. Melissa and Joey. So maybe I will have to check out MNJ. It's on Hulu. I watched like five episodes the other day. Yeah. My uh, my my new boy toy, Christopher Rich. <laughs> <laughs> Him and I will be going to, to some galas, some Hollywood galas. Yeah. I'll be chilling with both Veronicas too. We'll bring both Veronicas. Ooh, both. Yay. <laughs> All right, shall we talk about Jughead? Okay, let's get into Jughead. Yes, please. All right, Jughead sucks in this. That's all I have to say. I'm legit not even sure if I want to talk about him. He's a psychiatrist. He's divorced. He's got this monster kid. But you think he's the, the psychiatry patient? It's just, it's weird. And then, okay, can we talk about, he comes back for the fucking reunion with his monster kid, right? Jordan, aka Jughead Jr. They like call him like different things. Yes. Like I feel like the writers just kept forgetting his name. So sometimes they would call him Jordan. Sometimes they would call him Jughead Jr. Yeah, they're like, we don't know who this kid is. Jughead <laughs> got married, had a kid, is divorced, and does it like he just decided, like, does he, call Archie doesn't know Jughead's coming back. Can we talk about that? And Jughead just happens to decide that's where they're staying is at Archie's house. Yeah. Like, what kind of fucked up friend is this? It's weird to me, too, because in the very first scene of this movie, they show Archie's house. There's a big sold sign on the home mm -hmm. i guess archie and jughead haven't talked for a long time because like archie seems surprised that like jughead had a, had a kid yeah low key like legit like how does jughead know that archie still lives there one yeah like who like how does he not know like a, a new family moved in two archie just left the door unlocked because when archie comes home at one point yeah jughead and his kid are like already settled into the house so, like, Archie is surprised to see a child in his house. And he's like, who the fuck are you? Like, why are you in my house? Yeah, like, like, why are you here? Yeah. Like, why are you here? Why are you in this? Like, why aren't you at your parents' house? Or, like, at a hotel or something. Like, a Holiday Inn or something. Yeah. Like, why doesn't Jughead call up, like, Archie beforehand? He's like, hey, I'm coming into town. We should, like, definitely meet up. Let's, like, meet up first and then, like, figure out, like, the sleeping arrangements. But no, it's I'm just going to stay at Archie's with my kid that he doesn't know about. Jughead Jr. also invites uh, fucking Moose and Midge's kid over, too, to, like, sleep at Archie's house. Yes. Without even, like, consulting Archie. <laughs> like, it brings a fucking friend that he just met. Yeah, and both these kids hate Archie. They team up and, like, attack him. They shoot him with, like, weird, like, Nerf gun and, like, dark guns and stuff. And they put jelly in his bed, and it's, it's just like, what is this? What is this? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Archie does get revenge, though. He almost murders... Uh, Jughead Jr. in like a later scene. We'll get to that in a little bit. That is true. <laughs> he legit like actually almost kills him. But yeah, so the movie basically starts with like, it's just like this one of the last days Archie's going to spend in Riverdale. Pam has gone back to the city. He's like finishing up like a court case he has. 
and he's going to go to his reunion. He just like, it just happened to be like, if his reunion was the weekend after, he wouldn't have been around. Yeah, it's just like trifecta of things going on in Riverdale. Like nothing ever happens in Riverdale, but tonight, for some weird reason, there's a reunion. He's wrapping up a case and all of his friends are coming back. I don't know. It's it's weird. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. We get that weird, like he's walking around Riverdale. He's like, oh, this is going to be my last day. Look at, ooh, let's go to... Pop's chocolate shop. Let's, you know, say goodbye to him. And the nasty teenagers that are working there now who are always, like, on Archie's ass. Like, they're nasty little shit. Yeah, they're, like, weird modern-day teens. They're they're mean. They don't have, like, good values. They swear and, mm-hmm. like, fuck with his food and stuff. Like, they don't... They're like, uh, who is this old dude that just keeps coming into our place? One by one, Archie kind of learns that everyone's coming back into town. He's like, exci- He's excited. And then he finds out there's going to be, like, a weird little, like, gathering at Veronica's dad's house. Like, I feel like these are events that should have been, like, sent to him already. But you know what? I bet they were. I bet they were, and I bet that Pam bitch threw them away. For some reason, Pam knows all about Betty and Veronica. Nonstop. Just talks about Ve- Betty and Veronica. Well, he's probably like, so in high school, there were these two girls that wanted me and they chased after me. When Archie mentions that there's going to be the reunion, she's like, oh, is Betty and Veronica going to be there? Those fucking cunts. And Archie's like, I don't know. I haven't. T- I've, yeah, she's not okay. I haven't seen them in 15 years. I, I don't, I'm don't. i guessing. Why wouldn't they be here? And she's like, oh, well, they better leave you alone. They better keep their fucking cougar claws off you. Archie's like, I mean, if they want me, they want me. I can't fucking help you. Sorry. I'm Pam's like, well, you know what? If I stay in town, I'm going to end up fucking slashing their necks. So it's probably a good thing that I'm leaving. And Archie's like, all right, you do that, bitch. Get out of my face, Pam. Bye, girl. Bye. And she leaves. Then, like, Archie has, like, a weird run-in with Hiram Lodge, like, in, like, the back of his limo. It's just, like, creepy, like, meeting the mob. It's creepy, but it's also awesome. (laughs) Yeah. It's like he's, like, meeting with, like, the mob boss. Yes. Hiram Lodge, he's, like, an old man. He's very, like, Blake Carrington from Dynasty-like in this, too. Like, the actual OG Dynasty. Yes. And he's, like, a villain-like. He's still running the town. I don't know, he's got goons, and he's like, Archie, my daughter's coming back into town for the reunion. You better stay away from her. Archie's like, but I'm I'm due to be married now. And he's like, that doesn't mean anything. Like, Archie, my daughter's coming back. Don't fuck her. He gets out of the car, and I don't know, he, like, picks up his, like, 1990 version of a cell phone. It's, like, that big fucking car phone, brick phone. He, like, calls his, oh, no, no, you know what? No, the dr- it's the driver. Is it the driver? Yeah. The window rolls down, and it's, like, the driver in front of the limo. The goon. And he's like... Hey, I need you to take care of Archie for me. He's thinking that he need- like is Archie really that bad, Hiram? Yeah, really. And it, he knows he finds out that he's leaving town like the next morning. So it's like, why? <laughs> like, come on, Archie is leaving town. He's engaged to another woman. Yeah, like he's closing up his shop. Like, <laughs> like his his little like lawyer office has like already been sold. His house has been sold. Yeah, and then he's like calling his driver. Telling him that he needs to take care of Archie. The driver misconstrues it and thinks that he means to have... He has to kill Archie. The boss wants me to kill Archie. He really meant just to, like, keep him away from Veronica. Like, just create circumstances to make sure that they don't, like, bump into each other in the next 24 hours. That's that's all he meant. But this driver thinks that he has to, like... Yeah, exactly. Snuff Archie. It's like a mob hit. And we get this, like, weird murder subplot... That no one, like, ever really fully figures out. Like, no one really realizes that this is going on. (laughs) No. It's amazing, though. It's great. I fucking love it. It's fucking perfect. Like, seriously, Archie's just, like, this harmless guy. Yeah. Like, it's never traced back to Hiram, like, that he might have been involved. He might be a, like, low-key hitman. Yeah. It's it's not like Archie, like, says, you know what? I want to be a dick, and I want to, like, string Betty and Veronica along this whole time. (laughs) I don't think most guys want to string somebody along like i think there's genuine feelings there if there's but there's also a fear of commitment i mean i don't blame hiram because archie's kind of weird like he's like i don't want you for a fucking son-in-law let's be real (laughs) you know what i liked those um those rich dudes that veronica married you're just like a weird low budget lawyer who's you know hiram should think about this who's getting the divorce settlements is Veronica getting divorce settlements from these guys or is Hiram paying paying something out for these guys? Like, let's hope she gets good alimony and stuff. Yeah, so I'm, I'm sure she has, like, paychecks coming in on her own. But you know what? Hiram probably funnels that cash. Let's be real. Yeah. Hiram's taking that because he had to pay some court fees and shit. So Hiram gives Archie three strikes. Three strikes and you're out. Uh, I don't know, like, what is he going to do? <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, it's just, it's just, don't go near my daughter. And Archie's like, I have no intention of doing so. I, like, want to say hi because we were, like, 
really good friends, but I haven't talked to her in 15 years. All right, so this is where, shortly after this, this is where um, Archie now heads home after his weird, like, clandestine-like meeting with Hiram. He reunites with... Um... Well, no, no, no. You got to remember, he goes to see Midge and Moose. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. Midge and Moose, they're chiropractors now. <laughs> and it's hilarious. And legit, every time we see Midge or Moose in this, they're cracking somebody's neck. <laughs> Which, it comes up, like, a bunch of times in this movie. Yeah, that, that's, like, their whole point of being. Yeah, and uh, Mo- uh, Moose is very, like, Biff from Back to the Future-like. Yes. I'm surprised they didn't find the same actor who plays Biff to be in this. He must not have been available. He must have been filming Back to the Future 3, maybe, at the time this is going on. Who knows? Something. I don't know. So he, he gets his neck cracked. Then, I don't know, he, like, swings by the chocolate shop. He finds out that fucking Reggie is buying the chocolate shop. He's going to expand his um, business, his little gym business. Yeah, he doesn't know this yet. They don't find that out yet. Oh, I'm just kind of like breezing through this because we're already like an hour in. You're like <laughs> jumping around. So then Archie goes home and finds Jughead and the kid. And it's like, oh, yeah, you could totally stay here. Hey, we got to go to uh, Veronica's now. Yes, we got to go to the big party, the big gathering. It's the pre-party, the event of the season. It's That's what rich people do. They have these mm-hmm. wild events. And <laughs> this is where... Archie gets reintroduced to the gals, Betty and Veronica. And Yes. Well, first, like, the girls reunite, and Betty's in, like, a dress she got on sale. And Veronica's in some designer thing. She can't even remember which designer. Yeah, she, there's, she has so many designers in her back pocket. And soon as Betty sees Archie, she's, like, trying to lose her boyfriend. <laughs> she's trying to, like, oh. Yes, it's like, oh. The boyfriend, yeah, you can go away now. Yeah, um, oh, can you go get me some shrimp cocktail? Oh, can you go refill, refresh in my drink? Oh, can you go, can you go get me some punch? Like, she's just constantly... Betty is desperate for Archie, and Archie's always kind of been like, oh, yes. great, thanks, Betty. He's trying to, you know, he's trying to, like, kind of link up with her, too, but he's trying to be low-key about it, and he, you know, they keep mentioning their significant others. Veronica overhears this, what? what Archie's engaged and mm-hmm. she's so she now has to go into like threat level midnight and just come at it full force cuts cuts the red tape struts up goes up to Archie and is basically like you know what tonight yes I'm coming by your house make sure you're there leave your front door unlocked I'm gonna mend your tie Jughead's children or Jughead's child Jordan Jordan Jughead Jr. what the fuck his name is he is like all what's he say waka waka every time that he yeah. sees Veronica he is smitten with her too I mean, she's Veronica, of course. The kid is smart. He's Team Veronica. But he's still a jerk. He's still a jerk, though. Never forget. So. While all this is going on, um, Hiram is not at the party. Instead, he's like on like the fourth floor of his mansion, looking out a creepy window, watching from above. Glaring at Archie. Peeking through the curtains, just staring at Archie and uh, Veronica. Sees like Veronica like throwing herself all over him. But for some reason, he thinks it's like Archie doing it. He doesn't realize that like Veronica is the one that's chasing Veronica has him. chased Archie. And he does that thing where he like turns around, faces the camera, like shakes his fist and is like, strike one, Archie. Strike one. Ugh, strike one. <laughs> and I don't know. <laughs> because Archie is so awful. So then, I don't know, I guess the party ends early. The party only lasts like 20 minutes. So now like Jughead is going to give Bob, Betty's boyfriend, like, like the tour of the town. Yeah, because, well, okay, here's the thing. Um... Archie talked to Bob a little bit and realized that Bob is a total, like, creep. And so he wants to, like, this is where I think um, Betty gets confused is that Archie is a good guy and wants to protect her. But she thinks that Archie's in love with her and wants to have babies with her. Betty is totally misconstruing the situation. So they, they orchestrate it so that Jughead... Jughead Jr. and Bob are going to be, like, riding around in Jughead's convertible, like, going around town, getting a tour. This will give Betty and Archie some alone time. Yeah. Is this where they go to the chocolate shop? They swing by the old chocolate shop? Yeah, this is where they go to the chocolate shop. They meet up with Pops, old old Popsy. Old Pops. They get there, and he's, like, he's on the corner, like, on the payphone in the corner, having, like, a very yeah. ominous phone call. With freaking Reggie, of all people. It's, like, one of those, like, one-sided conversations where he's all, like, shook. He gets off the phone, and he's, like... I got bad news, guys. Yeah. I'm closing the shop down or something like that. I don't know. But can we be real? The only people ever going in there is Archie. Yeah. Like, there's no one in this. No one in this shop. I mean, maybe it's just, like, the time of day that, like, Archie's been going in. <laughs> and, like, all the kids are in school or something, except for, like, the two idiots behind the counter. I don't know. Uh, I guess we find out that, like, Hiram Lodge owns, like, the street or something. He owns, like, the whole building or something on the street. Yeah. And he rents out to Reggie. Reggie. Because, of course. They show Reggie's gym, 
And it's it's a big ass gym, and there's not that many people there either. I mean, let's be real. Riverdale's kind of a small town. Reggie wants to like knock down the wall and like expand his gym. I don't know. Maybe he wants to like put like a um like a sauna or something. I don't know. Yeah, I was thinking he must want a steam room or something, like another excuse to get the ladies half dressed. Maybe like a pool or something. A little like Olympic sized yeah. pool. Archie finds out about this. He's pissed, so he like runs over, confronts Reggie. They get in this like weird little argument. Archie heads back over to Pops and he's like, Alright, it didn't work out didn't work out well. You know what? I'm gonna be your lawyer. I'm gonna represent you in this. Yeah, well, I mean it's again, it's a small town. So he like goes by the judge's house and is like, Judge, what can we do? Yeah, he's like, you know, since I'm leaving town tomorrow, do you think we can like bump up this trial? Can we have it today? Can we get it on the docket? Exactly. It's like, can we get on there? Can we like have court in session this weekend? Yeah. He's like, can we have like Saturday court? Because it's, it's probably like a Friday night or something. He's like, can we have court tomorrow before I leave town? Mm-hmm. Can we have it like 8 a.m. like early ass in the morning because I need to get out of town? And the judge was like, no, Archie, that's not how things work. Yeah. Um, You know, just because you're the only lawyer in town, I'm the only judge in town. And apparently like we're the only two people involved in the court of law, except for Hiram, Hiram's lawyers. Like we, we need to do this like through proper channels. We need to, like, set a date. We need to, like, go through all this. And Archie's like, no, man. Like, I always get my way. He's like, nope, not budging, Archie. Now he's, like, second guessing if he should leave town or not. He's all worried about this. Yeah. So he goes back and, like, confronts Pops. And he's like, oh, I didn't I didn't luck out with the, with the judge. We're fucked. We're fucked. Yes. And low-key, like, Pops is, like, an old man. He's, like, okay with this. Pops is ready to, like, cash in and go retire in, like, Arizona where the air is dry. Yeah, he just wanted to go. He has, like, a little... His idea is to get, like, a little, like, live in a condo, do some condo living. Mm-hmm. He doesn't have to take care of his lawn. He's a single man, I think. I don't know if he has kids or a wife. I have no idea. I get, I gather not. His whole life has been this chocolate shop, Patrick. Yeah, we never get any character development. <laughs> and these damn kids named Archie. We never get any, like, outside character development with, with Pops. Yeah. So he probably... He, you know what? It's his time. He wants to be, he wants to have like golden girls type gals for neighbors. Exactly. He He's ready. But Archie's not ready to let this go. No, Ar- Archie's nostalgic. We learned that. He just wants to keep this dream alive forever. Mm-hmm. But I guess he needs to go home. He needs to go home first though, because it's getting late. Gotta go home to bed. Yeah. So he goes home. Uh, Jughead Jr. and Moose's kid are there. They're like sleeping on the floor, like behind the couch. And they like poke their heads up and they're like giggling because um, they set all these fucking traps up around the house. Like the Jello in Archie's bed, he like Archie slips into his little fucking flannel PJs, hops into bed, he's just ready to settle in for the night. Maybe like work on the case, work on the old pops case. Yeah. And he feels something slimy in bed, and he's like, "What the fuck is this? Oh my god, it's green Jello. It's all like melted now." So it's, like, it's just gross, gross, gross. Looks like fucking Slimer from Ghostbusters shot through there. Yes, exactly. <laughs> And before he really even has time to react to that, Veronica's in his doorway in lingerie. Yeah, um, well, Ver- Veronica comes into the house, walks in the front door. The door's unlocked. Archie doesn't lock the door. She's wearing, like, a red trench coat. Mm-hmm. The kids see this. Um, Jughead Jr. and Moose's kids see this. Veronica goes upstairs. The kids decide they're going to, like, watch Archie have sex. So they go out back. They find a ladder. Well, because, hello, Veronica is this hot woman that they're like, <laughs> oh, my God. Hubba hubba. Come on. Yeah. They um they put they do that thing where like they, they take the ladder, they throw it up to the window. Yeah. Jughead Jr. like climbs the ladder, he's like peeking his head in through the window. Uh Archie's on the phone with his with with Pam. Like, oh sorry I didn't call you. I said I was gonna call you earlier, but I didn't get a chance to. All this crazy shit happened. And Pam could care less. Pam couldn't give two shit. Yeah, Pam's like I already set up the uh, dining room. The new furniture set is coming tomorrow. The new appliances are coming on Tuesday. Um yeah, you you need to you need to get here ASAP. And that's when Veronica like stumbles through the door, rips off the trench coat. She's in some sexy fucking Ver- Victoria's Secret. Veronica's Secret, let's be real. Archie's like, I gotta go. And like hangs up the phone. And you know that he instantly got a boner. He got a little Archie boner. Yeah, let's be real. And he's trying to hide it though. He's like, oh, wait, I'm engaged to be married. Oh, yeah. I, I need to put an end to this. Like, really? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. This, this boy. Like, Veronica is like, I want you. Yeah, she kind, of, she kind of throws herself onto him. Take me. And that's when Archie looks out the corner, looks over Veronica's shoulder and sees Jughead Jr. peeping through the window. He walks over and he pushes the ladder. They're like on the second story of the house. <laughs> this is like so messed up. <laughs> this is so they're, messed up. They're a good like 20 feet off the ground. He pushes the ladder. Mm-hmm. Uh, Moose Jr. is down there, like, trying to balance the ladder because it's, like, swaying back and forth. 
Jughead Jr. is like moments away from death. He's going to slide off that ladder, fucking crack his head open. Luckily, he the ladder like falls into a tree and he's saved and he like climbs down safely. But I'm just going to say that Archie was not thinking with his brain, but with his other head. What are you doing? <laughs> All right, I think you should take us through the last half of the movie. We already just got through the uh, the hilarious setup of the film. Okay, so it's the next day, and Archie's going to try and figure out how the hell um, he's going to save the chocolate shop. And he's at the library, and Betty's there, and Betty's just, like, trying to get his attention. Yeah, she's just stalking him, basically. Yeah, she's just, like, following him around. She's like, well, don't you remember that one night? And he's like, Betty. He's definitely trying to, like, let her down. Get weird flashbacks right here, where they flashback 15 years earlier. Yes. Low-key, I love that they make no attempt to make any of the characters look younger. They just look exactly the same. Pretty much. Ex- almost. The only thing is, like, the girls have longer hair. Jughead's wearing the hat. Archie has his uh, Letterman jacket on. Exactly. It's worse than 90210. It's worse than, like, Gabrielle Carteris and Anne Zier in China. It really is. It's, like, it's bad. Christopher Rich is probably, like, older than 35. Because I, I figured that Archie's probably, like, 35, 36 in this movie. Yeah, like, they are our age at this point. Yeah, Christopher Rich is probably, like, closer to 40. Well, actually, and let's be real, 36, 35 is actually not that far off. Um, I love making Cat feel old. <laughs> you and the boy both love that. Shout out. Shout out to the boy. So, um, yes. Um, anyways, Archie's trying to, like, find some kind of precedent to save the stupid malt shop, chocolate shop, whatever you want to call it. And Betty's, like, just, like, on his ass. And he's like, girl, I don't have time for you. You're not making me hot and bothered like Veronica does, so just go away. But he knows he can make her hot and bothered. They bring up, like, a weird moment from their past where I guess, what, did, like, their car break down in front of, like, a motel or something? Yeah, like, their car, they were, like, out just hanging out and their car broke down and they had to spend the night in a motel. And they may or may not have fucked, I guess, um... Archer remembers it. Betty doesn't remember it. I don't know. I feel like maybe there was just a little um, finger action, if anything. Maybe some dry humping. Maybe like a hand job. I don't know. Like they never, they never explicitly state what happened. Betty, like later on, says, "Oh, I totally." Like later on in the movie, she like has a revelation, and she's like, "I never forgot what happened that night." Really, bitch? Because it seemed like you did. Yeah. Like what happened? I want to know. <laughs> like what happened? Yeah. Like and. Obvious, like, if you don't remember what happened, it wasn't that good. I don't know. They get, like, all hot and bothered against the stacks of books. And this is where, like, Betty, like, becomes a woman. She's like, ooh, she's been turned on for the first time. She has her sexual awakening right here. Like, she felt it, maybe, between his pants. Something sparked her. You know what? It's like the that older dad bod Archie. He's a little more, um, a little more puffier. Mm-hmm. She finally realized here... That she didn't love Bob. She didn't like Bob. Bob, it was just kind of like her fallback guy. If things didn't work out. You know what? She was like, if I'm 37 and I'm still single, I haven't found Archie. I haven't like landed that deal with fucking Simon and Schuster yet. Then I'm going to have to marry Bob. But she has her sexual awakening. Right before this, she reads Archie like one of her Easter egg hunt children's stories. It's like... That's bad. Yeah, Archie laughs at it. Archie is, like, holding back the laughter. Archie's like, oh, Betty. Yeah, like, Betty, come on, you're not a writer. You need to... Oh, fo- Betty. You need to focus on your, on your like, schoolhouse gig. And she's like, yeah, maybe you're right. Betty has her sexual awakening, and she jumping ahead a little bit, but she works on a little piece, a little, like, romance piece. <laughs> All about that night in the motel. Archie has to leave for a bit, and that's when... he Well, he finds, like, Betty leaves, and he finds a book that has, like, something he thinks he can work with. Yes, so he wants to go back to the judge to let the judge know. But uh, little does he know, Hiram's goon, whatever his name is. I don't think he has a name. I don't think we ever learned his name. He's just the goon. He's tampered with the car. He's um he's tampered with Archie's car that Jughead's been using like all day long. Like Jughead's been like riding this car around. Yeah. He like cuts the brake line or something. I don't know. Something kn- ridiculous. So Archie, Jughead and Jughead Jr. They're in the car. They're driving. And Archie like needs to stop the car, but he can't slow the car down. The stick shift breaks. The car's stuck in, like, the fifth gear or something. It's now, like, cruising through Riverdale, like, flying through Riverdale, driving through, like, hot dog stands. They're driving through fucking bushes, fences, picket fences, like, nearly running over the mailman. And then they, they, like, crash into, like, the judge's house or something. Yes, because why not? Of all the people whose houses you could crash into in Riverdale. we do, I do love, before he crashed in the judge's house, we get that scene like where he almost hits the mailman and like the mailbag flies up in the air and you see all like the paper and envelopes flying in the air and he, like the mailman's like scattering to get all the mail. But 
He crashes into the judge's house. The judge is pissed. And he's like, if this was your way to make me like have a last minute like court session today, fine. The signal's loud <laughs> and clear. I'll do it. I'll do it, Archie. Like, okay. So things haphazardly worked out in his favor. Things always go in Archie's favor. So now we're in court. Archie's there representing Pops. On a Saturday uh, afternoon. Hiram's there with um, Reggie. They're on the other side. Like, does Reggie have a lawyer at the table with him? I feel like he doesn't. Yeah, I don't know. They're doing this weird, like, courtroom scene. I don't even know, like, what Archie's argument is. Do, do you remember? I didn't even write this down. I think I fell asleep at this part. It's like a historical landmark for something. Like, what is the significance of Pops? Like, really? The judge is like, this is not an historical landmark. This is, like, a place of business that is owned by Hiram Lodge. There's a fucking gym next door. Let's be real. This shop's only been open for like 20, 30 years or something. It's like hasn't been open forever. Yeah. Like, um, did JFK have a malt there or something once? I don't think so. Meanwhile, side plot outside, Jughead's with his son. I don't know. It's like they're in a park or something. They're by the gazebo from Stars Hollow and Bluebell and we get the rap. And we find out that there's a little girl that has a crush on Jughead Jr. Mm -hmm. They decide, I don't know why, but Jughead decides that he doesn't want his son to be a loser just like him. He wants him to like have a chance with the ladies. Yeah. So he's like, all right, I got it. We're going to do break dance in the middle of this park to a hip hop version of Sugar Sugar. Yes. <laughs> because 1990. <laughs> yes. Rap is a thing. Hot vanilla ice like beats are a thing. We got Jughead break dancing, rapping to Sugar Sugar with his son in the park. And everyone in the park digs it. They love it. They are dancing to it. They are totally mesmerized. <laughs> it is the greatest thing ever to these people. It's the craziest dance I've ever seen. I, I don't know. It looked like Jughead was having a seizure to me. That That's what it looked like. Have you ever seen Weekend at Bernie's too? Uh, of course I have. You know when Bernie is entranced by the Calypso music and he like does the Bernie dance? Yes. That is Jughead dancing to rap music. 1990s rap music. <laughs> Based on Sugar Sugar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Crazy stuff. All right. What happens next? Because I honestly don't know. Okay. Um, I think there's more like, okay, so we have the court. The judge is like, I got to look at this. I got to think about this. We'll reconvene tomorrow morning. You kids go have your wacky reunion. We'll, we'll reconvene in the morning kind of moment. Then there's a point. So now I guess Archie was supposed to leave his house. Yeah. The second day. And he forgot about it because he got wrapped up in this court case. And the movers show up to finish gathering all Archie's stuff. And he's like, oh, fuck, I forgot about that. So now he's well, like... Well, it's not even that the movers show up to finish gathering his stuff. It's the new people are moving in. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> and are like, bitch, your stuff is going in storage. Fuck you. Yeah, it's like they're there. They're sh they showed up. So now, like, Archie has to stay at, like, a hotel or something. Yeah, he has to, like, stay at, like, the roadside motel. Yeah, like, he's forced now to stay in a hotel. First, Betty shows up when he's about to get in the shower. Oh, we get this weird fucking scene. I thought it was going to end up in a threesome. Actually, I thought it was going to end up in a fucking foursome because Pam comes back. But take us through the scene. Take us through the scene, Cat Halstead. So first, Betty's ass shows up. And she she's wearing a nice tight dress. She's sexed it up a little bit. And she's like, here you go, Archie. My latest story. And he starts reading. He's like, hi, Betty. What you doing here? And he starts reading it. It's like a sexy story. It's like, what got into you? You know what got into her, Archie? And Archie's like, hey, Betty, this story sounds familiar. This was that night our car broke down. Yes, Archie, I remember everything. Now let's fuck. He's trying to like delay her, stall her. So he's like, all right, why don't you go in the shower? I'll meet you in there in a minute. So she like runs in the shower. There's a knock at the door and it's Veronica. Because of course. Yeah. So she shows up. She's down to fuck too. And he's like, oh my God. So then uh, he like throws her in the closet because like Betty's coming out of the bathroom and she's like, Archie, where are you? Mm -hmm. And he's like, I'll be, I'll be in there in a minute. Yes. Because of course. <laughs> then Pam arrives. Like Pam finds out where fucking he's staying. Well, because he's probably a good boyfriend and called and left her a message on her like call service or whatever they had back in the day. Yeah. I'm staying at the roadside motel. So now he's got three girls in his hotel room. They're all down a fuck. He doesn't know what to do. I mean, obviously, Archie must have, like, the best dick ever. Or maybe it's his fingers. Maybe he's got, like, good finger game. You think he has, like, a good, like, swirl move or something? Some, like, or maybe he's just curved the right way so that he hits the, the G spot. Let, let's get into, like, a little, like, Archie fuck moves right here. He's got the trifecta, I think. He's got the long, thick dick. He's got the finger move. He's got the tongue move. Probably like snuggles and then he listens. He doesn't get up immediately and go make a sandwich or something. Yeah, like rubs your back after. Yeah, he makes sure they... He doesn't He doesn't finish till you finish. I like men like that. Kat's got like uh, hearts above her head right now. Dreaming of Archie. Sorry, I, I was thinking about somebody. <laughs> so 
I think you should take us to the reunion for like the grand finale. Okay, so they finally have this stupid damn party. Finally. And Betty and Veronica have discovered that they were both in Archie's room. And they realize this shit is still on. The stupid game is still going on. This like, who is Archie going to pick? They're at the reunion. Jughead has gone and met Ethel and she is like a total hottie. She's like a married with children hottie. She has coke eyes though. I just want to say she has like those like tawny contained coke eyes. Okay. So and the thing is, Mr. Weatherby wanted the Archie's band to reunite at the reunion. Okay. These people haven't talked in 15 years and you want them to just suddenly play a song together. Okay. Yeah. They like find out last minute too. It's not like they had time to plan this out. And... Yeah. Like they found out two days before. They haven't practiced. Do they remember the music? Do they remember how to play instruments? Instruments. Barely. Does Doug could even have a drum set with him? Of course he does. Of course. Of course. Well, apparently they they don't need it. It's probably been in storage at Riverdale High all this year. These years they played the Jingle Jangle song. They did play the Jingle Jangle song. That's right. And I'm dying every time. Every time I hear Jingle Jangle now, I can't take it seriously. You know what? I was kind of upset that like, they. I was do- watching Christmas specials and I couldn't take those words seriously. I was kind of upset that they didn't play Sugar Sugar. They blew the Sugar Sugar load with that fucking weird hip-hop version of it no yeah <clears throat> instead we get jingle jangle and now all i can think about is pixie stick shout out to jingle jangle because of riverdale where jingle jangle is a drug that looks like pixie sticks what is jingle jangle it's like ecstasy is that what it is i think it, yeah it's like an ecstasy ecstasy type thing i guess but it's highly addictive and it's basically pixie sticks it's ecstasy it's an opiate it's a candy. It's all kinds of things. It's all kinds of crazy fucking things. Yes. So Betty and Veronica confront Archie at the reunion in front of Pam, in front of fucking Pam, because Pam's there. And Robert. He's still hanging around. Oh, yeah. We, like the, These bitches are both still hanging around, even though Betty is like ready to jump on Archie's dick. Yeah. Betty forgot all about Bob. <laughs> Archie is like, oh, fuck. Like, I'm in a pickle right here. Betty doesn't even care. Like, Betty doesn't even care that Bob's there. Like, she's like, who are you? I don't know you. Bitch, you're still here. So now we get, like, a weird moment. Pam and Bob are now, like, shuffled to the side. And they're like, you know what? Maybe we should just get together. They they realize they both kind of want the basic same thing. Yeah. So, okay. Like, um, cause, um, so Pam's like, who are you? And he's like, I'm Bob. I'm a hotshot from the city. I have dreams. I want to live in the city. I want to. Li- I love the hustle and bustle. I love the subway. I love staying up at 3 a.m. and getting a pizza on, on the corner of 2nd and 4th. And Pam's like, you know what? I love those things too. Maybe we should get together and live in, live in my penthouse. And he's like, oh, funny you say that because I just sold my, my other penthouse and I need another penthouse. So yeah, let's do that. So they get together. Yeah. Break off the engagement. <laughs> they don't even tell Archie and Betty. They're just like, they're together. Yep. They already have plans. Yeah, they're just like dead. They're like, they're not telling us that they're hooking up, so we won't tell yeah. them. Betty and Veronica force Archie, like you have to make a decision. And Archie's delaying it. He's like, nope, I can't give you an answer yet. He's like avoiding them because he doesn't want to give an answer. Fucking 36 years old, 35 years old. I don't have time for this shit. He's like, I don't want this drama. I have a wild court case in like eight hours that I have to prepare for. I don't have time for this. Oh, but here's this random package for Veronica, according to the driver. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so Hiram Lodge's driver shows up. <laughs> because this isn't messed up enough. He hands him like this big ass box with like, it's like a Christmas gift. Like the old TV thing where you pull the top off, has a bow on it. It's shiny package. It's ticking. <laughs> it's fucking ticking. <laughs> like, because that's not a warning sign or anything. And I don't know, for some reason, like Archie decides he wants to have like one wild night at Pop's chocolate shop because it, d- it doesn't seem like things are going to go as well. Oh, and- oh, it's because Pop has like changed him, chained himself to the door. So Reggie can't demolish it. Like he's not going to demolish the building. He needs the building. Yeah. Oh yeah. He does that thing. Like to- t- totally weird because... Like, four scenes earlier, Pop's like, you know what? I'm ready for retirement. You know what? It's time. I've ran this shop for 50 years. I don't need it anymore. But now he's chained himself to the fucking door. Because the bulldozers are there at, like, 10 o'clock at night. Like, ready to fucking destroy the building that moment. <laughs> because that's how insane Hiram is. <laughs> Completely ignoring the idea that there's an actual court case the next day to decide if they're going to save this building or not. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know what? Hiram's like, all right, we need to break ground tonight. Fuck it. Fuck it. Like, he could potentially go to jail for this because they're not letting the court case finish. So, I don't know. It doesn't make sense. They didn't think this through. Yeah. Hiram didn't think this through. This was his strike three. This was Archie's strike three, I think. <laughs> I mean, Hiram is, like, super aggressive about Archie. Like, dude, I bet if he didn't, like, freak out about Archie, Archie wouldn't be a problem. Yeah. <laughs> so, they all rush down to um Pop's chocolate shop. They're trying to, like, stop Pop from, like, dying, basically, because... 
this bulldozer is just going to plow right through them. They don't give a fuck. Hiram gave them orders just to, no matter what, just drive drive over them. Kill yeah. them if you have to. Just so fucking Reggie can have his fucking sauna. <laughs> yeah, like, okay, what is Hiram... Like, why is Hiram doing this? Like, is he funneling money through Reggie and this is just easier to give Reggie what he wants? You know what? It's a front for, um, for Jingle Jangle. We, um, the Jingle Jangle. Yes, that's it. It's coming. It's on its way. It's not there yet. It's going to be the back room at the gym where they're going to have all the workers package on the Jingle Jangle into little pixie stick packages. Yes, exactly. We got it. We, we got it figured out. Okay. Into those little pixie sticks. Glad we got sticks. that out. That's when, um, so Archie has his gift, but, you know, he's, he's holding it. He doesn't realize he has a bomb in his hand. Somehow, Veronica finds out about... He's like, why did you give me this? <laughs> and it, then it's like, oh, it's a bomb. Well, what happens is um, they decide, you know what, Veronica, why don't you go talk to your dad? Veronica, talk to your dad. Settle this once and for all. So she goes over to her dad in his like, limo, which is nearby. And that's when the driver comes up. And he's like, you know what? We don't have to worry about this because in 32 seconds... Archie's going to be dead because he was holding a fucking bomb. And Hiram's like, what? 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 You told me to take care of Archie. And he's like, yeah, to make sure he doesn't go through this court case, not kill him. So Veronica's like, oh, fuck, Archie's going to die. So she like runs over and she's like, Archie, the present in your hand, it's a bomb. And he does that thing instead of just like putting it down and everyone running away. He's like running around with it, trying to like figure out what to do. It's like that Batman 1966 movie. Sometimes he just can't get rid of a bomb. Yeah. He ends up throwing it into Reggie's building, into Reggie's gym, and the bomb goes off, and Reggie's gym is destroyed. Oh, well. Karma, bitch. Yeah, karma is a bitch. Sorry, Reggie. And, well, Hiram has a change of heart because yep. his property's destroyed. He lets Veronica go. Well, Veronica's like, dude, if I want Archie, I'm going to go for Archie. Like, back off, old man. Oh, yeah, because uh, Veronica's like, I don't need your money. I can... I have my own alimony for my four ex-husbands. Exactly. Um, he doesn't. He doesn't want to build it anymore because it's destroyed. So he's like, "Fuck it, I don't care anymore." But luckily, Pops is um, not harmed by this bomb explosion. Pop survives. Yeah, Pop survived. Reggie's gym's gone. Reggie's gym's gone though. It's the next day. Everyone decides that they're going to stay in Riverdale. Betty's going to stay in town. She's going to get a teaching job, work on her um, novel on the side. Jughead's going to move in because he wants to raise Jughead Jr. Veronica's going to stay because she wants to have like a go at go at it with Archie hopefully mm -hmm. um, Archie is gonna stay in town too even though he has nowhere to live because he sold his house <laughs> yeah like okay where are you gonna live babes and where are any of them gonna live yeah um, they let they let Reggie still be friends like oh Reggie you're forgiven <laughs> like okay Reggie you can get in the picture might as well and then we get final moment Betty and Veronica are like alright Archie you need to make a decision who are you gonna pick and Archie's like hold on let's take a group photo first mm -hmm. Let's take a group photo. And we get a group photo of them all. And the decision is never made. The movie ends. <laughs> exactly. Because there will never be a decision. No, there'll never be a decision. And this was supposed to parlay into season one of the Archie as an adult series, which never happens. Yeah. Which I would have. Oh, man. <laughs> I kind of wish it had. I know. <laughs> like, I really wish it had. Like, I love this Veronica. I love Christopher Rich's Archie. I, you know, I'm not a Betty fan, but I'd like Lauren Holly as Betty. And um, I would have preferred they would have recasted Jughead though mm -hmm. the Jughead in this was just too weird for me I feel like Jughead's a hard character yeah the actress Sam Whipple unfortunately passed away in 2002 from cancer which I so I feel really bad like making fun of him yeah all right what are we doing next week what wacky world are we settling into because we are gonna go into TGIF territory our next like four episodes yes is gonna be Friday night television because Hulu had literally has like every TGIF show on their lineup they dropped us back in like October, but we were like in the midst of our holiday season, so we obviously couldn't do it, and we had things to get through. We've been plotting, we've been planning. Hulu keeps giving us these gifts. Yes, we're getting a lot of gifts from Hulu. Thank you, Hulu. Thank you, Hulu. Tweet us. Uh, tw actually, Hulu does tweet us. Uh, they tweet us the wine glass emoji from time to time. Yes. They love us. Yes. Shout that's out to, awesome. <laughs> shout out to the uh, to their social media coordinator and. We are going to the. We're going to Chicago. Is that where uh, the series takes place? Uh, yes, I believe so. Yes, we are going to hang out with the Winslow clan and their wacky neighbor Urkel. Perhaps you know him. Perhaps you know and hate him. 
just like us. He's so problematic. <laughs> yeah, Urkel is a tough thing to swallow in uh, 2018. Let's just say that. Yeah. So we have we have to make a decision right now. Should we do a pre-Urkel episode of Family Matters or should we do a post-Urkel episode of Family I Matters? I feel like if you're going to do Family Matters, you have to do Urkel. Should we do, should we do Urkel's first episode or should we do like Urkel's been developed? Urkel has like wacky personalities. Let's do first episode before he gets like super problematic. Yes. All right. So we're going to do, I think it's like. Because season... he gets problematic real fast. Yeah it's, yeah. it's like season one, like episode like nine or something like that, I think, is when Urkel makes his yeah. first appearance. So we're going to do Family Matters, the debut of Jaleel White as the character that swept the nation in 1990. Like everybody was doing Urkel impressions. Everybody wore suspenders. Every You wanted the Urkelos. You wanted to the suspenders hounding their parents for cheese we were weird kids and where can you follow us where can you follow our wild adventures you can follow us on twitter at very podcast you can follow us on facebook and instagram at a very special podcast yes you can find us online at a very special podcast.com and salty rock media.com yes go to salty rock media we have articles there we are recapping tv yes. shows we're talking about um what, what are you doing a series on like magnificent women of the 90s i'm doing yes. motivational women so like i have a post up about murphy brown i can tell you there is one coming about julia sugarbaker Ooh, shout out to julia sugarbaker and one coming about maggie malone so yeah so tweet me your motivational women and we have side podcasts on there yes yeah we have side podcasts on there if you love nano 20 uh there's why not to win bros uh in which two dudes talk about nano 20 we have, if you love comic books, we have things about Batman and even Archie. Um, I have erotic fan fiction um, being read, dramatically read by me that I scour on the internet. Uh, so check them all out. Um, we can't forget Getting Caddy. Yes, uh, we have some um, big and we have some big things coming up for Getting Caddy in the next few months. So definitely We've got like two major things coming up for Getting Caddy. Yes, so definitely peep that all out. Bye. And as always, bye. Watch the skies. Bye.